Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem crawler log folder. And I will say that the problem description of this is a little difficult to read. And if that's the case for you, the funny thing is you probably shouldn't be grinding leak code. Actually, you should probably learn this stuff from like Linux or like doing some development or projects or whatever. But even if you don't know anything about Linux or the command line, you can still understand this problem if you kind of understand the concept of a folder, which you can understand if you've used like Windows or Mac or whatever. Let's kind of think of it from the perspective of like a state machine. They tell us in this problem that we start in the main folder. Now, who cares what that actually means? But they basically say that from this state, there are three kind of possibilities that could happen. We could either do this. This is the most straightforward one where we get dot slash like this is the string. In that case, we kind of just stay wherever we happen to be. If we're in main, we'll stay there. If we're somewhere else, we'll stay there. We could also get a string that looks like this, which just has two dots and then a slash. And this will actually take us closer to the main folder by one step. Now, if we're already in the main folder, it doesn't do anything. So in this case, I'm going to show you that here we're going to also stay in main. Now, otherwise, we might get a different string and it could pretty much be anything. So it could be something like this. D1 stands for directory one. So this is saying that now we will move into a child directory or rather that we're in the main folder right now. And inside of the main folder, there is a folder called D1. So then we will be in this folder now. We'll be in main slash D1. This is where we're currently at. So now once I kind of show you the three decisions that we can kind of take from here, I guess it's kind of a decision tree, kind of a state machine. I'm honestly not really sure the best way to describe it. But the main possibility, suppose uh, from here now we get something like D2. That would take us then into another directory called D2. So uh, that might look something like main slash D1 slash D2. So I'm realizing I'm running out of space here. I probably should have drawn this arrow like over here or something like that. But here, the last couple things to know is we could now do another dot dot slash. And this time it's actually going to do something. The first time we did that up here, we were in main and we were trying to go up one directory, trying to go outside of the main directory, but we're not allowed to do that. So so now we're in the D1 directory. We're trying to go up one. So that pretty much means just, you know, get rid of this part and then just go back here. So go back to main. So at this point, you might think that we're kind of popping from here, right? We can pop from some kind of stack data structure and technically that will work, but we actually don't need the stack. And I'll go over that in a second because I realized that I haven't actually mentioned what we're trying to return in this problem, because I think just kind of going over the overview is a bit more important first. But here we will end up back in main. And over here, if we were to get this just one dot slash, then we are going to end up in the same directory. So that's like the very simple case. Nothing's going to happen there. Main slash D1. So the main complexity comes from the fact that if we get a directory, we're going down into another directory. If we get dot dot slash and we're not already in the main directory, we're going up one level. So it's pretty much like you're either going down or you're going up or you're staying exactly where you are. So those are the three states that we have to keep track of. Did we go up, down or did we stay the same? So what we want to return is given a list of operations like these, after we perform these operations, how many operations would it take for us to get back to the main directory? Suppose the operations we got were D1 and D2. Well, in that case, we're here. So obviously it would take us two operations to get back to main because we'd have to jump up two directories. From here, it would be zero because we're already in main. And from here, it would be one because we're in D1. It would just take one directory pop or you know jumping out of it to get back to main. So knowing that, we don't need a stack. We don't need to keep track of which directory we're actually in. We just need to keep track of how many layers nested are we at the current point. It can never be negative. It's either zero if we're in main or it's you know one if we're in a directory or it's two if we're in two directories, whatever. So this can be solved in constant space and linear time because we will have to iterate over the input. Now let's code it up. So I'm gonna keep track 
of how many operations we are away from the main directory initially it's zero because we're literally in main so then i'm going to um, end up returning the result but now we actually have to go through the logs the list of operations that they're giving us so for log in logs there are three cases the first one is the simplest one that's what i'm going to do dot slash that's where we stay the same like we don't go up or down we just stay the same so i'm going to put a continue here otherwise log is equal to dot dot slash and in that case we're going up so you might think take result and decrement it by one perfectly reasonable thing to do we're trying to move closer to zero but what if we're already at zero what if we're already in the main directory how can we move out of the main directory we're not allowed to do that so one thing you could do here is say if result is greater than zero only then decremented but i personally don't like to have like three layers of nested things so i'm going to go ahead and actually just rewrite this like this result will never go below zero so set it to the max of zero and result minus one i think that's a slightly more pythonic way and a cleaner way of doing it but you can do the other way if you prefer. Lastly is the else case. And the reason I put this in the else case is we have no idea what this string could be. It could be a D1 or a D2, who knows what the directory name is, and it doesn't really matter to us anyway. We don't have to keep track of that. We'll just say, take the result and add one to it because we're going into a directory that's moving us further away from the main directory that we started at. So that's why we increment the result. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run this. As you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.